Hi, you're listening to Pop Up Podcasting. We make podcasting easy, so stick around for tips, tricks, and a behind the scenes look at the podcast industry. Hi, I'm Lisa, and in this episode, JP, Will, and I stay very true to the topic at hand and discuss how long a podcast should be, what we're listening to right now, and how long those podcasts are, as well as a few more factors to consider when determining your podcast length. JP, you wrote a blog post about this topic a few years back. Do you remember, and could you read it word for word, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely long. Uh, so if it's how long should your blog post be, probably not this long. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, papapodcasting.ca slash blog is where you can find that. How long should my podcast be? Solid plug. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of kind of data and kind of anecdotal stuff cited in that in that article. And I think it's probably a good read for anybody who's thinking about this stuff in a serious way. But the the short answer is it should be exactly as long as it needs to be and no longer. <laughs> uh, yes. And and it really is like, how long can I hold my listeners interest for? But then there's nuance to that as well, because making something that is really, really tight and information packed or entertainment packed. And, you know, it's 12 minutes of gold is a lot harder than, you know, 45 minutes of conversation that's kind of lightly edited. So I think there's, you know, there's that kind of consideration as well. I think you're, you're better off putting out something that is longer than it needs to be but you're putting it out on a regular basis and you're building that audience uh, as opposed to everything needs to be a perfect, super tightly edited gem. But because those are so much work or so expensive to produce, uh, we're only going to do them once every six months. So yeah, I think there's, I think there's balance in all these things. And, and one of the things that I talk about in the blog post is there's sort of this balance between how easy it is to produce how good it is and that sort of <laughs> qualitative, you know, judgment by the listener, but sort of, you know, how, how good of a podcast it is, how easy it is to produce. And then the third end of the triangle is uh, how long it is. And uh, I would say you have to pick two of those, you know, it can be easy to produce and long, or it can be easy to produce and good, but not long, which is maybe, where we're landing with this podcast because we're going for short but fairly uh, streamlined production process or it can be good and long but that's going to be really hard to produce so something like serial right the, the award-winning crime drama narrative podcast uh good and long but definitely not easy to produce so you know and i i, I think there's i think there's a lot of examples of that I like your breakdown on the um, on the image, how you've got like easy and long overlapping. And then in the middle, it's like not good. If it's long and it's easy to produce, it won't be good. I like that. You have to check out my image. I think it's I think it's it's repurposed from an engineering thing or something where it's like it's like you can have it fast, you can have it cheap or you can have it good. But you can't have all three. Like if you're if you're asking me to design a product or something, um, those are the the choices you have. Fair. I'm curious not to derail things. D Lisa. No, go for it. Please derail. Um, me. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. How how long are the podcasts that you guys listen to? Ooh, I like that question. The one I probably listen to, I'm like stumbling over my words. The one I probably listen to the most lately, though, is The Art of Manliness. And that one is uh, like just audio only. They're in the range of like, uh, like 40-ish minutes, I guess. Yeah, my one that I would listen to the most often would be generally over. They don't have like sort of what you were saying is like they make it as long as it needs to be. Um, they do daily as well, too, but it's um, usually over an hour, hour and 15 and change, depending every once in a while. They'll do like a certain like a special episode that's closer to two or something like that. But yeah, in that neighborhood. Did you say the name of that one, Will? 
Oh, it's called uh, No Dunks. Okay, like is that like an NBA? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> they, they do it. Maybe I don't know. No, they do a little bit of everything. Like now that the season, the NBA season, uh, for uh, those who don't know, uh, mm-hmm. ended uh, what last week, and oh, so you're gonna, now we're going to have to put this out next week. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh oh, um, keep it evergreen, Will. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so they'll they'll transition to doing like other like they'll do like their off season ones or not basketball every once in a while they'll do a basketball related one, but it'll just be about like random stuff uh, now. I don't know about you guys, but well, mm-hmm. when COVID started to be a thing, I I found myself converting over from listening to podcasts to watching them more, <laughs> probably just to mm-hmm. see other humans. <laughs> so so those ones can get quite long, like even up to a couple hours and all uh, like the School of Greatness with Lewis Howes. I watch that one fairly frequently and that can be like an hour and a half, sometimes getting upwards to two hours, I think. But I don't check them out at like, I don't listen or watch in one shot. Right. Oh, okay. What about you, JP? Yeah, I mean, I... I almost exclusively listen to dumb comedy podcasts uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and they're long. They're long as well. Uh, yeah, they're, you know, um, Doughboys and Never Not Funny are probably the two that I listen to the most. And uh, there's some real juvenile humor in there. So please don't <laughs> judge me for them. Uh, but they're, you know, an hour and a half, um, probably on average. And I think that's. You know, maybe that's going against my uh, my three pronged approach here of uh, easy, good, or long pick two. But my my answer to that is there's a lot of skill involved, right? Like if you're, um, it wouldn't be easy to make a hilarious hour and a half long comedy podcast, or you know, an hour long basketball podcast, or an hour long you know, one-on-one interview podcast, unless you're, you know, you're a great interviewer, you're getting great guests, you're, you've done 10 years of experience in comedy, all of this stuff. So it, if it's that, that's what makes it not easy, I guess, is all this, all the supporting, you know, life experience and, and uh, broadcasting experience in, in some cases uh, for those, those folks. So I would say those are sort of the exception that you can do, you know, what I consider a good and long podcast, but could I, could I start doing an hour and a half comedy podcast tomorrow? Uh, not, not with the same success level as, as these folks. Right. And I think like a lot of, I don't know necessarily for all of the shows that, um, everyone brought up, but I assume a lot of them are fairly well established. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think that can play into it. I don't know. I think if you have, you know, if your listeners, your, you know, weekly downloads are off the charts, then yeah, the people are probably, hungry for more content, right? So they're going to, they're not going to shy away from a, you know, an hour and a half podcast or something. But if you're, you know, if, like you said, if I wanted to start one tomorrow and I'm like, well, I think I'll just launch with, yeah, two hours of me in conversation with a random, some other random person that nobody knows, Mm -hmm. you know, the demand to hear just two like people who nobody knows talking might be a little bit lower. So maybe start, you know, shorter, punchier, get right to the good stuff. Um, But yeah, I think if you're established, you know, there's there's the demand for your content uh, sort of already, so you, you might be able to pull off doing it a bit longer for sure. Yeah, the, you can you can get away with a lot. Like you know, to, I don't know to cite our favorite citation, Joe Rogan. You know, <laughs> if you're if you're promoting a podcast where it's two hours long, but you're smoking pot with Elon Musk, you know, right. and you're already a famous comedian and podcaster with a huge following, right? That's a very different thing than, you know, JP and Lisa chat about personality types for two hours. Oh, we should do that. We should do that. We should have you guys take the test on the podcast. That would be good. And then we'll talk about it. Actually, I'll guess what I think your personality types are first and then you'll yeah. take the test. Well, hey, you're the you're the podcast producer. So, you know, put it on the schedule. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I would say that's a mistake that some people make is they look at the stars mm-hmm. uh, and they and they compare themselves and they try to do what they're doing. Um, and and I think as an as an unknown trying to build an audience from scratch, you're in a very different position. Well, when I read the the blog post that you had written, 
<clears throat> I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to edit together me coughing or clearing my throat and just put just a whole episode is going to be that. Just one one of these times. That's going to be the whole episode. Uh, um, you're the you're the you're the Rick from Rick and Morty uh, of our podcast. <laughs> I don't think I've ever watched Rick and Morty. Is that a uh, that, he's always burping show? and clearing his throat. It's super oh, gross. Okay, okay. <laughs> so not, not a compliment. I'm sorry, Lisa. <laughs> but what I was getting at is I read the whole post. In the end, I was like, oh, yeah, there's like lots to consider. Hmm. But you really brought it home. You, you finished it off very well. And I was going to read what you wrote because that tied it all together nicely for me and made me feel much more at ease. Because you wrote, don't get bogged down worrying about length, because in the end, wouldn't you rather lose some listeners halfway through than have no listeners at all? I was like, yes, that makes me feel so much better. It just takes all the like, here's some good information, but don't worry about it too much. Yeah. Yeah. I, and and like I said earlier, you know, there's so many factors that go into, can I, you know, what what do I have the capability of doing and what is my goal too? Because some of our clients, you know, one of their goals is not building a big audience. It's um, this kind of super powered networking of podcasting of like, I want to sit down with you for an hour long conversation. And the audience's reaction to it is secondary to, you know, me connecting with you and and having, you know, this good experience uh, sitting down together. So, yeah, I think there's there's lots of things. And I think a lot of people will tell you. The ideal podcast is, you know, 18 to 24 minutes or something. And I think I, I talk about that in the blog post a bit, but I don't think there's any rule out there. Like we, we all talked about super long podcasts that we enjoy and there's super short podcasts that are successful too. So, yeah. Thanks for checking out Pop-Up Podcasting, podcasting made easy. If you're interested in learning more about podcasting or starting your own podcast, you can find us at popuppodcasting.ca where you can download our free guide, Podcasting at Work. <laughs>